Thank everyone for, for joining us on, uh, I guess, what is our first presentation on cloud accounting. Um, so we're going to start with uh, a little bit of the basics uh, about who we are, which I think most of you are familiar with us. Uh, then we'll go into an expl explanation of what cloud accounting is, why you would choose to use cloud accounting, and then picking the right software for yourself, and then uh, talking about the add-ons that you can use to uh, improve the application that you choose. Um, and there are a number of add-ons that you can choose from. We're primarily going to be talking about two today. And then we'll talk a little bit about our processes and any next steps that you might want to take. So finding a good accountant is really important. Um, you guys have obviously chosen the best one you could find. Um, we believe that uh, it's really important to make sure that we educate our clients um, questions um, and that we work within a very specific niche to make sure that we are uh, the experts in our field and able to assist you. Uh, when you're looking for an accountant, it really is important to make sure that you do ask for a referral. And I believe many of you have come from referrals from existing clients or from agencies uh, themselves. A little bit about us, and I will move through this quickly, is uh, we are an accounting firm that specializes in independent contractors. We've been doing it since 1984. Um, so we're actually in our 31st year of operations. Uh, we are ISO 9001 registered, which basically means we have a series of systems and processes that help us strive for constant never-ending improvement. Um, that's been a big driver behind uh, our uh, exploration into cloud accounting is the fact that we recognize that accounting is constantly evolving and we want to always be improving our skill set and doing what we can to improve uh, our knowledge and make the process better for our clients. Um, we are currently assisting clients all across uh, the country with the exception of Quebec. Um, we do have uh, people that we can recommend for anyone who has some specific Quebec needs. Uh, but unfortunately, Revenue Quebec is uh, almost like a different country, um, which makes it a, um, a lot different from any of the other filings in any of the other provinces. So what we do for our clients is proactive strategic planning, financial quarterbacking, business coaching and management, and financial planning. So our goal is to help you with your businesses by becoming the experts on your financial situation and help you with the guidance and coaching for all of your financial team, which might include lawyers, financial advisors, partners, anyone else that comes into your organization to help your business grow and succeed. Um, part of the reason that many people choose us is because um, we offer a full one-stop solution uh, from everything including a free in initial consultation to in-house paralegal services to help with incorporations, um, name searches, um, and of course uh, our benchmarking analysis and our audit protection, two of our um, key differentiators in the services that we provide. Um, now that we've got that out of the way, let's jump right into uh, the benefits of cloud accounting. Um, so for those of you who are not familiar with the term, which I would be surprised if there's many on the phone, um, cloud accounting is basically any accounting services that are provided through the web. Um, traditionally, um, businesses would use a, a product that would install on a local computer, and that was troublesome to say the least. Probably the most prolific of those tools was QuickBooks. Uh, and I was a, um, a very um, anti-advocate for QuickBooks desktop um, because it was really troublesome. Um, it would create more problems than it solved. And uh, the one thing QuickBooks did really well was market their product or service. But inevitably what ended up happening was there would be problems within the file um, that would be difficult to um, isolate and fix. And it would end up costing our clients more than if they'd used a traditional um, spreadsheet or something simpler. So for many years, we advocated for our clients to use an Excel spreadsheet. But now with the advent of cloud-based technology, um, we're very excited about the possibilities that this brings because the CRED is a great solution for uh, small business owners because it's simple, um, it's Excel-based, which most of our uh, consultants have lots of experience with. But it is limited. Uh, it's limited in that it's a bit of an older template. 
Uh, it's limited in that it is Excel and it does require some physical data entry. Um, I know some people have uh, done workarounds to try to copy and paste information in there um, with varying degrees of success. Uh, but it doesn't provide the complete freedom and flexibility that you get with a cloud-based solution. And with a cloud-based solution, what you're getting is the ability to interact with online banking, online credit cards, as well as anything that you could find as far as online information. Um, and this information can be sucked in and made available uh, without you having to do data entry. In addition, it eliminates the need for the macros that we use in Excel um, which, uh, when, work, when they work, work well, uh, but unfortunately can be prone to issues. Uh, if you, for people who are familiar with the credit, if you know if you uh, insert rows and, and you don't insert them correctly, meaning you haven't copied the macros, uh, then we can have problems with the um, uh, final numbers that get produced in the summary statements of the Excel spreadsheet. So one of the other, or some of the other problems that we realize with traditional software um, is that the information is uh, static and it's relied on people to actually manually update that. Whereas once we move to a cloud-based technology, um, the information can be dynamic and it can update uh, as information is received. Most of the cloud-based tools will actually uh, actively fetch information on a three-day cycle. So we'll go out every three days and check for new transactions and bring those right into the system for you automatically. Uh, this is great when we have um, clients such as uh, independent professionals who typically leave the bookkeeping right up until the last minute. Um, and now this information can be proactively gathered and captured, making the process simpler and less time consuming because you're dealing with smaller pieces of information. Um, of course, it's tied to a specific uh, location or computer, um, and the information has to actually bounce around from place to place. Um, for example, either uploading that to our website, giving us a USB drive, um, or um, printing and physically dropping off the information. Um, the problem with that is obviously that this can mean that there's duplicates, the files can be um, maybe emailed to us and then updates made and changes made. Um, there's lots of problems with, with having uh, data that is not centralized and available to all people at all times. By having a centralized uh, access or centralized point where anyone can access it, that means that you can go in, make changes, and in real time we'll get access to those changes. And of course, uh, the big benefit being that we do have access, that we can log in at any given time um, and check for information. We can put locks on certain dates so that you can only make changes up to a certain point, or sorry, beyond a certain point. Um, and we can also make changes at year end. So if uh, there's an update that needs to be made or a correction that you need some help with, we can actually log in in real time and make those changes um, as we go. In addition, with traditional systems, uh, backups are problematic. Um, I have unfortunately seen many a client who have lost their cred <coughs> part of the way through the process and had to recreate that. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, whether that be just a physical machine that's died or um, you know a, a virus or what have you. Um, once we go to the cloud, the benefits that we have is that everything is centralized and we're using enterprise level backups and security. <clears throat> because the information is being provided by a large organization. <clears throat> now, one of the benefits you do get with the cred is that you probably don't have any real costs with updating uh, or upgrading the software. Of course, if you are using a desktop-based tool um, like QuickBooks uh, Traditional or MYOB or uh, Simply Accounting or Sage or any of those traditional desktop platforms, then of course it's, uh, there are costs to upgrading that um, and maintaining the proper version. And I can tell you we've had, again, lots and lots of issues with clients who have very outdated um, uh, versions of QuickBooks and trying to get information back and forth between, those, between their version and the versions that we have um, can be problematic. 
particularly if the version that you are running is no longer supported. Um, and we have seen that as, as become an issue. Um, while we maintain an you know, old dying computer here with um, as old versions as possible, um, when we do have problems with, with those uh, physical computers, which has happened in the past, um, then getting old versions is limited because we can only get the versions from QuickBooks that are still being supported. So when if our computer with the old you know 2003 version of QuickBooks dies, uh, we become SOL and are no longer able to support that for our clients. Now getting into some of the the benefits or the reasons why you would choose to use a cloud-based um, software, and some of these I've touched on already, like the automatic bank feeds, um, are tremendous benefits because they can really reduce the amount of time that's spent uh, by yourselves in preparing your books. When I talk to most of my clients, they tell me it takes them anywhere from 10 to 20 hours to prepare the cred. And I know from my personal experience, and uh, I'm a consultant very similar to, to yourselves, and I can do that in a tenth of the time. Um, so it's amazing the amount of time savings that can be achieved by automatically linking your um, bank statements and credit cards and having that information automatically pulled. Um, and in addition to pulling that information automatically, you can do automatic calculations. You can set up rules and processes in most of the cloud-based tools um, to either split accounts. Um, so for example, if you know that every time that you go to Shell, you want that to be 70% uh, automobile and 30% personal because that's your split, you can set up a rule to automatically do that. Uh, you can also set up uh, rules for automatic classification of expenses. And you can make these rules as simple or as complex as you want. Um, you can have uh, them based on the amount, based on the description of the vendor, based on the date, based on all of that. Um, and that can then make based on the criteria that you set up and develop. This can create a huge amount of uh, time savings. And, and they are done slightly differently between the different tools that are out there. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that when we get into the various tools. But most of them offer this type of fun functionality. Um, and this is where a lot of the benefits can uh, be, be garnered, is in this automatic classification and automatic processing. And trying to make this uh, system or, or this uh, year-end process that most people hate and automate as much of it as possible so it's a really simple, easy process. And my objective is, is to get at least you know, the sort of 80-20 rule. If we can get 80% of the work done and 20% of the effort, then we've come a long way. Um, there are also other um, aspects uh, that can save, mind, like, save time, like invoice collection and follow-up, which aren't as applicable for our client base, because most of you are probably dealing with a staffing agency and have to use their time and billing system um, anyways, which means that there's no need for an invoice collection or follow-up system. Uh, but they do have great ones for any of the, those people that are, have a sideline business in addition to their consulting, uh, or have a maybe more uh, traditional business model than a uh, average consultant. And uh, I will mention those briefly. And, and I'm also going to talk about some of the integrations when we come to HubDoc, which can integrate with um, uh, tools like FlexTrack from Procom to automatically go out and fetch your invoices and have those processed for you automatically as well. So one of the big reasons that we like cloud accounting so much is the ability to collaborate. Um, one of the little known facts is that accountants spend about 60% of their time um, chasing down clients, communicating, and finding missing information. So the more that we can share uh, information and collaborate in real time, the more we can actually reduce your costs. So there's tremendous benefits to being able to you know, um, shoot an email, launch a go-to meeting, and be able to access uh, each other's information in real time, um, view each other's screens, make changes, um, and have that information be live and be seamless. So there's lots of benefits to collaboration. Um, all of which I couldn't explain in this, this short presentation that we're going to have. But one of the other things that I think is important to touch on, and I did mention briefly before, 
is the peace of mind that comes from working with an enterprise um, provider, whether it be QuickBooks Online, Wave, uh, Zero, or FreshBooks. All of these guys have an automatic uh, backup systems that are perform performed regularly, and in fact, uh, all of them um, are ISO 27001 uh, registered, which basically means that they have to have systems and process in place specific uh, to storage and backup and retrieval to ensure that the information um, is safe. Now, most uh, small business owners uh, don't have uh, very good backup systems. And because we're, we're focused specifically in the IT niche, um, we do have clients who are experts in this, and, and it may not become as much of a concern for them. Um, and some concerns that I have seen raised are um, privacy and um, security of information. And unfortunately, none of the providers can tell us uh, where their servers are located. Uh, they are all probably subject to um, you know, the US Patriot Act. And for some of you, that may be sufficient enough to make it a, a non-starter for you. Uh, my perception is that it's uh, very little risk. Uh, I, from the information that I see on a daily basis, there's nothing in your books uh, that you should be concerned about any government having access to. Um, and of course, uh, you have to file it and, and send it to the Canadian government anyways. Um, and I'm pretty sure that they are sharing and communicating information with the US government as is. So well, uh, there is a reality that this information is most likely stored uh, in the US and subject to the US Patriot Act. To me, it's uh, not much of a concern. But of course, everyone has to weigh these decisions for themselves. Now, I want to get into the, the various different tools that are, avail that are available um, and tell you why we like the different tools that we like. Xero is probably uh, my favorite application. Um, the reason I like it the best is because it's usability, um, it's simplicity, um, and it's um, great uh, level of documentation and information that's available for it. Now, the only downside to Xero is it's also one of the most expensive uh, of the tools. The good news is that we do get a discount. Right now it's 15% uh, off the retail pricing. Uh, and there are also some versions of Zero that are only available to accountants. There's something called uh, Cashbook, which I believe is $12 uh, per month. Uh, and that's only available to accounting firms and available for us to, to provide to our clients. Now the advantage of the cash book is that it gives you 90% of the functionality. The big thing it doesn't provide you is the ability to integrate with third-party applications, which we'll touch on a little bit later. So for those of you who are looking to have um, you know, third-party application integration uh, to do things like OCRing, um, scanned receipts, that might be a non-starter, in which case you'd need to go to um, one of the higher versions. Um, most people can be satisfied with the uh, $30, $30 a month package, which I think comes to about $25 with our discount. Um, and that does provide integration into um, third-party applications and does give you uh, the functionality that's necessary for most of our clients. The only time you would need to go to the version above that is if you have foreign currency. Unfortunately, the middle version does not include foreign currency. But what you'll get with all uh, versions is the ability to link and uh, bring in your credit card information and your banking information, have that information uh, keyed automatically or processed automatically. It's sort of a handshake between the bank um, and zero, and that information flows through automatically. Um, what is important um, is to check in, I recommend every two months, just to make sure your feed is still active um, because the bank feeds do uh, occasionally um, break because there's uh, a double factor authentication, which basically means that you enter in your information, but there's also security questions which do change um, when you log in. And depending upon the banks, if they have um, multiple sort of security questions, then the security question you entered the first time to log in may not be valid 
the second time you log in. It might ask for a different security question. Um, so it's something that's important to check uh, every about two or three months uh, because typically the fetching of information can go back about three months. Um, now, it doesn't mean that the information can't be uh, entered without any data entry uh, beyond three months. But that handshake or that automatic uh, sharing of information isn't there. What you would need to do if you have information that's older than three months that you need to bring into one of these applications is to log on to your uh, online bank account, download the information. Uh, the preferred format is uh, Quicken or QFX. Um, for basically all the applications, prefer that format. Um, you download that and then physically upload it. Uh, now, there are tools in basically all of uh, the tools we'll talk about today uh, to capture duplicates and um, help prevent issues that can be associated with uh, manually downloading and uploading um, as opposed to having that handshake format. But it's always important at the end of the year and the end of the, the process to uh, run through the bank statement, do reconciliation, uh, make sure that the uh, opening and closing balances tie in together. Uh, so one of the other great choices available out there is QuickBooks Online. Um, now I am uh, part of the QuickBooks Accountants Council and I am working with the people at QuickBooks to help them improve uh, the application where it stands. And it has moved uh, substantially over the last couple of years from where it was to where it is now. Um, and I think it's got the potential to be the best application. It's also got the most online users. There are about there are actually over a million online users compared to zero, which is about half a million. Um, so they're they're doing quite well on on the number of users, but there's little glitches with the program that are cumbersome and 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 make it tricky. Uh, but I have had clients who have said that they prefer it, particularly those who come from a QuickBooks desktop um, uh, background because the tool has been designed to be similar to the desktop platform. It is different um, and there's different levels of functionality and in fact all the functionality that's in the desktop version is not in the online version. But of course all the functionality that's necessary for our client base uh, does exist. And I think one of the things again that I like so much about Xero is its simplicity um, and QuickBooks uh, doesn't have the same level of simplicity. It's, a little bit more complex and it can do more things than zero can do uh, but in that uh, means that there's a bit more of a learning curve um, and uh, as well as I mentioned before zero has sort of the best um, online uh, help functionality you can go to any page in zero and click a button and it will take you right to the help and support for that page that includes videos and tutorials which is really great um, the QuickBooks support. Um, they have a great telephone support, which is good, um, but their online support for those people who like to work through their issues themselves or are working through issues in odd hours uh, is not as good as, as zeros. Um, the big perk that you are getting with QuickBooks is it is substantially um, cheaper than uh, zero. So that's a big advantage. I know a number of people have chosen to use that. And I'm not sure that I have the most up-to-date pricing on this. Um, but the other benefit that we have is we have some, some great discounts available uh, for the QuickBooks desktop as well. And in fact, um, the pricing that we're getting is we've got 50% uh, off uh, for life on either the um, Essentials or Plus versions, uh, which do provide a little bit more functionality than the Simple Start. Now, the Simple Start will work for the most basics of basic of companies, um, but as you're getting into anything slightly complex, you're going to need to move to the, either the Essentials or the Plus. Again, most of our clients tend to fall into the Essentials version, which seems to work quite adequately for them. Now, Wave is another uh, application that's available, and the greatest benefit to Wave is that it's free. Um, there are a number of downsides uh, to, to Wave. Um, Wave was probably the first application that we started using and started recommending because um, you couldn't beat the price point. 
the only downside, or not the only, but one of the major downsides to, to WAVE is its ecosystem. Um, an ecosystem refers to the, the level of third-party applications that are available um, for use with it. And Xero has the largest um, third-party applications or add-on database, um, followed quickly by QuickBooks Online, um, and then WAVE is, is actually the, the most limited. Um, they also don't have an open API at this point, whereas the other two do. Um, and that's a big differentiator between why there are more add-ons available for the other two applications. Uh, to me, the add-ons, I think, are an important aspect of cloud accounting. And we'll get into some of the specific add-ons in, in a minute. Um, but thinking about it from a strategic standpoint, what the add-ons bring is the ability to have um, tools and processes that are specific to industries and niches um, that may not have even been thought of yet um, that can be um, substantially beneficial to those areas and niches. Because the problem we have with traditional software is that you're relying on one organization like Intuit or, um, or, one, or any of the big players to be able to build out all the functionality for all the industries. Um, and what inevitably happens is you end up with a whole bunch of solutions that don't really fit any of those industries all that well. By breaking it out to third-party developers who are probably experts in their own field and niches, they're able to develop tools and solutions that work within their vertical um, and have the opportunity to then go and monetize those solutions. And that means that we have more developers working on solutions. We have developers with specific industry knowledge. Um, we end up with better tools overall. Um, the only downside, of course, is that you do have to pay for each add-on that you need. Uh, but again, you're only paying for the add-ons that, that you do need. So all the other superfluous information and, and functionality that you don't need, uh, you don't have to pay for, number one. And number two, isn't in there to clutter your mind and clutter your system. Uh, because I think one of the keys to being successful with any cloud-based solution is simplicity, simplicity, simplicity. So the easier it is to learn, the easier it is to pick up, the more likely you are to use it, and the better the process will be, and the more likely you are to get your information filed uh, accurately and on time. And I think that's the name of the game of, of the cloud tools, is to encourage um, business owners to be able to get in touch with their financial information on a more reliable basis, uh, more regularly, and to ensure that the process is less difficult and less painful, so that you're getting your information and your taxes filed on time and hopefully making sure that you're maximizing all of those deductions to reduce the total taxes payable. So FreshBooks is another player in the market. Um, I do mention it because they're quite prolific in their advertising right now about being um, an accounting solution, but I don't actually consider them to be an accounting solution. Uh, the reason I don't is because they're not a true double entry accounting system. Um, you can think of it more like expense reporting. It's sort of one-sided. Um, but what they do really, really, really well, uh, better than anyone else, um, is invoice collection um, and aging. Um, they also have the ability to add terms and add payments, um, and they have payment gateways. And there's lots of functionality that, again, if you're not a traditional consultant, can be really important. And we do have clients within our system who are um, you know, billing clients directly and have many clients where tools like FreshBooks can come in very handy. And in fact, FreshBooks also does have third-party integrations um, with Xero and QuickBooks Online. So you can be using FreshBooks for your invoice collection um, and still be using Xero or QuickBooks Online as your sort of backbone of your uh, accounting infrastructure. And the, the benefit of this and the reason you might do that is because while you can do invoicing and aging of your receivables inside of uh, QuickBooks or Xero, they're not going to allow the same automatic um, terms and aging that uh, can be done with um, FreshBooks. Uh, another great thing about FreshBooks is if you um, are, have only a limited number of clients, uh, there is a free version available, so it's sort of a freemium model. Uh, like Wave, um, and if you need, you know, uh, more clients, then you just uh, pay for the number of clients that you need.
Now getting into the add-on marketplace, um, as I mentioned before, uh, add-ons or ecosystem is the ability to have different applications that then tie into what I call the backbone of your accounting infrastructure. And the backbone would either be uh, Xero, uh, QuickBooks Online, Wave, or FreshBooks. These applications um, can do anything from uh, invoice collection like FreshBooks to um, OCRing like the two tools I'm going to talk to you about today to um, reporting and functionality and, and providing insights to things that are specific to industries like there's ones that are for uh, barbershops or one, ones that are out there uh, for tradespeople. Uh, there's a whole slew of applications that are designed for very specific niches and to do very specific things to help uh, people make better use of their financial information and to help them grow their business. So there's ones out there for CRMs, there's ones out there um, for project management. Uh, anything that you could think of, there's probably an application um, either uh, listed on the add-ons website or uh, even being uh, built and distributed as, as uh, separate systems that aren't necessarily listed on the add-ons marketplace. Because um, businesses don't have to list their add-ons uh, on the add-on marketplaces. Many of them will build out a, a third-party add-on or application and market it as, as a service rather than as a product. Um, so it's amazing the amount of functionality that is continuing to grow and expand um, on this cloud-based uh, infrastructure. Two of the ones I want to talk to you about uh, today are HubDoc and Receipt Bank. I want to talk to, about those because those are ones that are um, applicable to virtually any business, particularly those uh, in, our, in our niche. Um, HubDoc is probably my favorite. Um, first of all, it's uh, Canadian, uh, founded out of Toronto by uh, two Jamies. Um, both uh, great guys, one with a legal background, one with a uh, technology background. Um, uh, technology slash accounting background actually and they built an application um, that is a robot that goes out and fetches um, information uh, automatically. Uh, now we know as I've mentioned before that um, all the major cloud providers will fetch the raw data for your bank statements and your credit cards but what they're not fetching are the PDFs and as accountants we still require the physical uh, either physical document or physical PDF electronic document to be able to reconcile and confirm the information is correct and reference the file appropriately. What HubDoc is doing is automatically going out, fetching the PDFs of your bank statements or your um, telephone bills or your cable bills or any statement that you can get um, available online. Um, and again, as I mentioned, they do have an integration um, with um, Procom's FlexTrack system, which is um, a time and billing system by one of the larger staffing agencies in the city. Um, and so if you're working with Procom, you can actually set up uh, an account with FlexTrack, so it will go and fetch the invoices, uh, then bring those, save the, the invoices as PDFs inside of HubDoc, then put a journal entry or a transaction into uh, Zero or QuickBooks Online, so there's nothing for you to do with that uh, at all other than set up the account initially. Um, and of course, this can do the same thing for uh, your uh, telephone bills or um, Best Buy bills or anything that you're getting uh, online, GoDaddy, anything like that. Um, it's also going to go and fetch the PDFs for the bank statements, as I mentioned. Now, the, the actual transactions for the bank statements are already done by um, Zero or QuickBooks Online, so there's no need to worry about the raw data, but still having a centralized location for the bank accounts is great because literally if you have everything set up correctly, there's nothing for you to do at the end of the year other than just tell your accountant, hey, everything's ready to go, and we can go in and we can fetch all the information without having to chase uh, you down for any of that paper uh, or information because it's all available to us at our fingertips. And as I mentioned before, uh, the statistics think about 60% of our time going and chasing down that information. The other thing that HubDoc does is it provides uh, a phone app um, for your smartphone. And on that app, you can access all of your uh, documents that you have stored in your HubDoc repository, um, as well as take pictures of 
receipts or, or um, purchase invoices. So whenever you're out at, say, Starbucks or Tim Hortons or you know um, a restaurant or whatever the case might be, you can pull out your phone, snap a picture with your phone. That information is then going to be uploaded to HubDoc and stored um, as a legal, a valid, uh, supporting piece of documentation uh, for audit purposes. But as well, it's going to be OCR'd, uh, captured, and put into uh, Zero or QuickBooks Online, available to be matched to either the credit card or the bank statement um, that the original purchase was made from. Uh, or, of course, if it was a cash paid expense, to be entered uh, as a director paid or cash paid expense. Um, so great functionality available for you, um, and there is a cost for it. Um, it's not a cheap solution, but if you think about the amount of time savings and the benefits that you're uh, achieving by getting that full audit trail and the ability to basically survive any audit with a level of documentation that um, has been difficult or expensive to get in the past, uh, it, it's a huge benefit. Uh, now there's another tool out there that I'm going to mention today, um, which is called Receipt Bank. And Receipt Bank is uh, another tool for OCRing and capturing of data. Now, both Receipt Bank and HubDoc allow uh, you to use a phone uh, or a smartphone-based application to snap pictures uh, on the go. And the key that you want, the habit you want to get into, or the best practice you want to get into, is taking pictures of those receipts every single day. Because again, it becomes a very small, simple, you know, two or three-second task. Um, that can be faster than sorting and storing the information manually, um, and then it's all captured. But you can also take the receipts home, store them in a box, and at the end of the month or at the end of the year, you could scan those using a high-speed scanner and upload those to either Receipt Bank or HubDoc. Now, Receipt Bank, the reason that I like to recommend uh, both Receipt Bank and HubDoc as two possible solutions is because Receipt Bank is probably the most accurate OCR engine of any of the OCR engines that are available. Uh, the only downside is that it doesn't provide um, that fetching uh, functionality that we talked about, about going off and getting the PDFs for you automatically. Um, it is strictly an OCR-based tool um, that is going to capture the data uh, from the individual receipts uh, or physical statements. Now, if you're in the habit of putting all your expenditures on a debit or a credit card, you could in fact bypass all these tools completely and do all of your data entry from your book or from your credit card and your debit card. And that is a perfectly acceptable uh, position from from our point of view because we can do all the data entry from that um, and do all the uh, tax filings from that but it doesn't provide the level of documentation that is necessary to survive an audit. So the benefits of using either Receipt Bank or um, HubDoc is that you're getting an audit trail. The ability to go back from your final financial statements back to original supporting documentation quickly and easily will help you survive uh, any audit. But it's not necessary um, for those people who are just concerned about compliance uh, getting the books done and trying to get them done as, as cheaply and as quickly as possible. For those people who are um, concerned primarily with cost, then a great solution is just to put everything on a credit card and a debit card, have all the transactions done uh, or, or uploaded automatically, um, and then use either the uh, tools for setting up rules and processes, uh, or there are also um, specific ways. Uh, in Zero, it's called cash coding. Um, in QuickBooks, it's a different process, but for manually processing multiple transactions very quickly, very easily. Um, so again, the benefits of these cloud-based tools is the ability to process mass transactions quickly and easily um, and to make the process as simple and quick as possible. Now, a little bit about our own processes and systems when it comes to the cloud-based technology. Um, as many of you know, we, we do offer every one of our clients your own document management system. Um, so you can log on to our website and upload and store uh, scanned documents. Uh, so you do get your own repository with us no matter what system that you are using. Um, so this becomes 
redundant if you are using uh, Hubdoc because the documents can be stored within Hubdoc and you don't need to um, download them and then upload them to uh, our repository. We do have access to them uh, through Hubdoc. But if you're choosing not to use um, Hubdoc or Receipt Bank, then you still have access to a place to uh, centralize and store these documents where you're going to have um, backups and um, as well as versioning available for you on those. Um, one of the other things is we are working on um, some more upgrades to come with our document management system and we hope to be adding greater functionality that, and greater transparency so that you can see more about our processes and be able to understand um, where your file stands now, um, who's working on it, how long they've had it, those types of things. So there's going to be even greater functionality coming down the road with our document management system. We also do offer uh, Skype and GoToMeetings uh, as we're doing right now. Uh, this is a, another part of virtual accounting um, that has uh, exploded for our firm. Um, I now meet with about 60% of my clients virtually. Uh, I know many of you like to meet face-to-face -face for the first time, but after that, uh, going to a go-to meeting or, or Skype call uh, can reap tremendous rewards. First of all, you don't have to deal with uh, the commute and whatever the traffic may or may not be like. Uh, secondly, you don't have to deal with parking. Um, and thirdly, we tend to be a little bit more efficient. I, I don't know what it is, um, but there seems to be a lot more respect around timelines uh, when you're dealing with a virtual meeting than you are with a physical meeting. Um, it's not uncommon for physical meetings to go a little bit longer. Uh, maybe it's just chatting about time and weather and, and more social type engagement that feels necessary when you're meeting uh, in person. Um, but the personal meetings tend to go along a little bit longer, which can then mean that the person who's got the next meeting is maybe delayed a little bit. And So if you've got the last meeting of the day, you might actually be bumped 15, 20 minutes, even half an hour sometimes, which we we do our best to try and avoid those, but particularly during our busy time of years, um, it does happen sometimes. But there seems to be a lot more uh, respect around the starting times um, and ending times of virtual meetings. Uh, so uh, not 100% sure as to what the cause of that is, but that certainly seems to be, seems to be anecdotally the evidence that I've experienced. Um, like today, we do offer ongoing webinars and support to provide more information. Uh, this webinar is really intended to be high-level information about what cloud accounting is, what are the different tools that are available. Um, you're going to start seeing a lot more from us about cloud accounting um, and specific hands-on training on the different tools, whether that be Xero or QuickBooks Online um, or Wave. So there'll be some hands-on training to help you understand the basics of how to use these tools, where to go to get more information. Um, again, they're all built so that you can pick them up quickly and easily. They all have uh, varying levels of on, uh, online help um, and uh, physical support. Um, and our goal is to help you to understand how to use those tools and the, and the information that's already available for you so that you can learn these tools quickly and easily. Um, we also do have some flexibility uh, by moving more to a virtual environment. Um, so team members here have flexibility of working from home as well um, and working flexible hours so we're not tied to a sort of nine to five schedule, um, giving us greater flexibility to maybe you know, host a meeting after we put the kids to bed, uh, which I know is a, a favorite of mine. Um, I know I would personally prefer to get out of here a little bit earlier, pick up my kids from school, and then come back online after I put the kids to bed um, and, and and that seems to work well with with the clients because um, you know you don't have to worry about trying to come in during office hours or lose productivity. Um, now you can work in the evenings uh, or times that are are suitable to everybody. And uh, I guess that's that's really it. Uh, I've gone about 45 minutes now. I'm going to try and unmute everybody. Um, to see if there's any questions out there. Um, so if you, anyone has any questions about any of the tools that we're using um, or any of the processes, you know, I'd love to hear from you. Andrew, it's uh, Rob here. Hey, Rob. Hi. Um, did you say that uh, there's 
uh, additional discounts available for a couple of these through you guys? Yeah, uh, all of them except for Wave, because Wave is uh, it's free except for if you're using the um, payrolling feature, which again is is uh, not necessary for most of our client bases. But uh, for both QuickBooks Online and uh, Zero, we get additional um, discounts uh, over and above what you could pay if you went direct. So if anyone's looking at getting set up on this, uh, the first step is to get in touch with us and, and find out what our pricing can be on it and what, and what version okay. we might recommend. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions or any recommendations for me on how I might want to tailor this the next time I put it on or suggestions on how we can improve the webinar? I guess that's good news. I guess I, I, it was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess that was a good intro.